<laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Hidden Plot. Uh, I'm just having a quick look around because I came up the other day. This is Fox and it got so close. So I'm just checking it's not here. Because if it is, I'm staying in here today. If it's not, hopefully I can get out and do a bit of water. Okay, so after marking out where the tomato was going to go, I figured that they were probably a bit too close together. So I've had a bit of a rejig, so I'm going to go away. So I've had a bit of a rejig in that I've moved the racking from sort of this end to that end and I've moved the possum table over as you can probably see. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, let's tilt you slightly, there you go. Um, so the chilies and peppers will go down this side and then the tomatoes will go down this side. So I've already done a quick weed, so I'm going to put down some more compost and then we're going to get the halos out and give them a whirl. Ooh, get the tomatoes in. So I've marked out where I'm going to put each of the tomatoes and one of the chilies because I have too many chilies for this side to go into, so I've put them on that side. Um, so I've marked them all out, put some of the compost in, however I have run out of compost and as you can see not all of them will fit in the ones that I've got. So I'm going to nip home because I've got another bag of compost there and I will come back and finish the job. So I'm switching to this method now, mainly because I was joined by my neighbour in the plot and didn't want her thinking I was talking to myself. I mean, nothing would be new. So the tomatoes are now in. Uh, these tiny tims as well, they do seem to sort of be flowering. Not really too sure why, given that they're only probably, what, an inch high? Um, so we're going to keep our eye on those, probably do a Google and see why that might be happening. I hope that's not a bad sign. But hey, we'll figure it out and we'll watch what happens. And then the other tomatoes are in. Now, I have been watching some videos on tomatoes and different things, and obviously you've got the branches that come out at 90 degree, and then you've got some that come out in between. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you meant to pinch them out, but I'm just gonna sort of watch them again, make sure I'm pinching the right ones out and at the right time, because obviously I don't want to kill them off. And then I've got my chili, so I had to have a bit of a quick rejig because I forgot, obviously, that um, I need to put the vine down. And then it was a quick case of, now they're rejigged, get them in the ground. So as you can hopefully see there then, that's the chilies in. Try not to make uh, bring them too close to the path because obviously I don't want to sort of stand on them. And again, there's a bit of a gap there by the door because I don't want to be coming in and kicking them. And then I've put the vine, so I've left it in the pot because we've been hearing different things about whether they it should stay in the pot. So then obviously in the winter months we can sort of fleece it a bit easier, um, or whether we should sort of be sort of digging it in. Um, it has got some new growth, so it is looking pretty healthy at the minute, so I'm sort of a bit loath to move it. Because obviously the plan is, is that it will grow up the frame of the polytunnel. Again, I just, I need to read into it a bit more, I need to sort of look into it. Because the other thing that is, is obviously if we do decide to take it out of the pot, we do have um, the anchors right there as well. So I don't know. And then obviously when we 
did the halos, there were these bits in the middle. So obviously if you want to put the canes in, you can uh, put the canes in and that will sort of secure them at the top as well. However, what we've done is we're planning on sort of putting uh, some wiring in across the rafters. And then um, putting some string down into the tomatoes. So we've got these little clips that will clip on to the tomato safely and not damage the plants and allow them to sort of get the support that they need. And then I did a quick water, walk around, obviously with the fox not being there. Uh, there was frost throughout the week, so we did. We were really lucky in the fact that we only had like a couple of the beans get these little uh, frostbitten leaves. So I had a quick trim of those off. But the rest of the plant seems pretty healthy. Please excuse the finger. So that was it for this week. So I have been growing some more seedlings to give away. Uh, I've decided to leave them in the polytunnel an extra week just to sort of give them a bit more time to sort of thrive. So we've got some squash, some pumpkins, and some cucumbers in there. Oh, and a courgette. Um, and hopefully over the bank holiday weekend, we can put them at the end of the drive and people can help themselves. We've also got a cucumber and a courgette on the grow for us as well, because obviously in those beds, there's only two when we've got space for three. Sweet corn needs another sort of a uh, few weeks in the polytunnel just to sort of get a bit bigger. And then we've got the leeks, which hopefully next weekend I can sort of start having a look to thin out because they're doing really well. And then we've got some peas growing. As you can see, they're just starting to peek through there. Um, they're going to go in the garden. And then the radishes from our friends are doing really well as well. So that's everything from us this time this week. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like our videos. Stay safe and we'll speak to you soon.